How's everybody doing? Ready for a Trader Tuesday? Hey, what's happening? How you doing, bro? <clears throat> Shit, good, bro. Just been waiting, anticipating this next session. I'm on the road right now, so I'm just going to be tuning in, listening. Cool, cool. Good to see you back each week, man. I, I really am glad to see you tuning in each week. And, uh, man, I, I hope some of you guys took the trades we've been talking about the past two weeks because they have been absolute bangers. Um, you know, both both on some of the Thor calls as well as a lot of our own TA, uh, some of the calls we've made here. And and you can go back and look at all this in the, the Tuesday Trader Review, right? I do a write-up after our charts, and then you see the follow-up each week, kind of what where, where we left off and where we are now. Um, and, and there has been some absolute bangers. Uh, so Thor Prince, Trader Tuesday, in its own, it has been printing as well. So glad to have you guys. Uh, Give me just a minute here. I'm going to make another upload to the Tuesday Trader channel of just some, uh, it's not even terms. It's just, um, how should I title this? Uh, things to consider when placing a trade. How about that? Um, uh, I don't know. Okay, anybody, you know, did anybody jump in? Did some of you guys take the calls we were talking about last week? Um, while while I write this up real quick, is anybody, uh, you know, jump on that, get that last, uh, especially that last four-hour Bitcoin call? Um, that was a Thor call, not just one of our own TAs. Anybody take them? No one? Come on. Nah. I wanted to take it, but I fucking missed it. It did. It That was an interesting one because it was so close to triggering, and then it went and hit take profit zone. Well, almost. Um, it may not have quite. And then it did fill and shot right up. But it almost looked like Bitcoin kind of shortchanged it and was heading up with, without filling that zone and then sent right back down into it. Th Thor's fucking powerful. Um, <clears throat> all right. I will do more of a write-up on this later. Um, you know, honestly, it'll probably be Thursday when I fill this in a little more. But you guys will be able to get an idea uh, of, of sometimes some of the things I look at uh, when I'm placing a trade. And I will go ahead and share this as well uh, on the live stream. Just give me one moment here. All right. Where am I? All right. So before we get into Thor and we get into our our regular review and everything else, I now that we are getting. Oh, he left us. Worst time ever for <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are you ragging us? <laughs> <laughs> like literally, right? As I'm talking, it's like, oh, let's refresh. <laughs> like, let's update your shit. How about now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, but this isn't Twitter. Come on, Discord. Quit fucking rugging me. Uh, so anyway, uh, now that we're getting into talking about a lot of our own TA and looking at a lot of our own charts and things like that, um, here's kind of a a checklist 
that I will kind of go through uh, a process of elimination, if you will, to tell me, okay, does this trade fit within my specs, right? And the first thing I want to know is what is the major trend, right? Are, are, are we in currently in an uptrend or are we currently in like long-term uptrend or downtrend, right? And then you also have sideways and ranging. And if you're sideways and ranging, it can be really hard to tell which way you're going to go. So a lot of times I like to wait until I can identify that I am in an uptrend or I am in a downtrend, right? Same thing with the minor trend. And we'll, we'll go over what do you mean major and minor. Uh, major may be over the past two weeks uh, per se, and minor be over the past couple days, right? So, so that's what I kind of mean. Um, and again, you determine if you're up, down, sideways, or ranging. We touched on the EMAs just a little bit, the estimated moving averages and those lines. And, and we'll look at charts and I'll get deeper into them. And I'll even, uh, I'll do a write up to post with this that shows kind of uh, some screenshots of charts to see what we're talking about too in the future. But are, are the candles, is the price above or below the EM, EMA, right? And then we have two EMA lines most of the time. And it depends, you know, you'll hear people say the 50 and the 200 or the 50 day and this. Well, it all depends what time frame you're on, which EMA you're actually looking at. So for simplicity, we're going to keep it as there is a shorter term EMA, which stays kind of right in the middle of price range. And there's a longer term EMA that doesn't react quite as quickly. And that is the same for every chart, whether it be a 50, a 200, a, a, a 20, whatever it be, you, you're going to have the shorter term that kind of follows the median of price action. And then you're going to have the one that doesn't follow as fast. So the thing you want to note is when it comes to the EMAs is the price above or below the EMA. And then is the short-term EMA above or below the long-term EMA? And then we've talked about the R RSI many times, the FOMO meter. Is price above or below neutral, right? And again, then you got to take note, like, has it topped out, right? So again, what am I looking at and how do I want to think about this? If I'm in an uptrend, right, let, let's just look at one side. If I'm in an uptrend and even in my minor price looks like it's going up, the candles are printing up above the EMA. The short term is above the long term. And the RSI is above neutral, but it's not topped out. Man, we got some fucking steam to be going long. That tells me that, that this is, we have momentum. We are in an uptrend. We are still moving in current price action. The EMAs are printing above the average, S estimated moving average, right? So we're printing above the average. The short term is above the long term, and the R RSI is above neutral, meaning we're fucking moving, right? All this tells me this may be a time for me to look at going long, right? Now, conversely, we're in a downtrend. Short term price action, things are going down. We're below the estimated moving average, right? The short term is a below the long term right? And we're below neutral. We, we don't have steam. We're not moving. We can continue down. And then that's when we start to use our indicators to see if we can determine a reversal anywhere or an indicator that price action may be changing. Um, like I said, this, this is going to make a lot more sense, I think, when we get into the charts. But does anybody 
have any questions just like on this slide, but before I continue on. Uh, I was going to ask, um, well, it's gonna, most likely going to show it on the next, uh, well, not next slide, but when you actually go on charts, but if you could show uh, when you're on the charts, uh, what the, how the upside um, looks uh, when it's above the, uh, the downside, um, how the candles can't uh, like close out. Uh, yep, yep. I'll get in. I'll get in. Basically, what each one of these means when I pull up the chart, we'll go through each one. Hey, hey Mode, uh, would you would yo, you yo. mind even like showing the new the newbies? Uh, like, how do you even like set the the RSI or the EMA in trading view? Absolutely, bro. Good, good, good awesome, call. Thank you. No problem. Um, and again, okay, so. Just a thing to note on that too. What 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 I'm doing in Trading View? You guys can get Trading View for free. Um, I should get an affiliate link or something. I don't know why the fuck I don't. Um, you guys can get Trading View for free. You don't have to pay for it. I pay for it because then I can add as many indicators as I want, which I really don't even use, but one or two, which you can do for free. The thing that it helps me with a lot is I can create as many pages as I need to or folders and I can create as many alerts as I want. And for as much as I'm trading, being unlimited with TradingView, it kind of pays for itself in the end. So to me, it's worth it. But what I'm showing you, you, you'll be able to do with a free version of trading view. So don't think, oh, well, now I got to go buy some other shit, whatever. I bought a frog, now I got to buy other shit. No, that's not how it goes at all. You'll be able to do this for free. So, all right, if we don't have any questions on this, but, but the thing to keep in mind is, man, if you're above, 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 Man, it looks like price is just going to keep going above, right? And this may be shorter term action, uh, you know, or the start. Um, remember, the trend is your friend till the end. So if the trend is all above and going, the trend is your friend until it ends, until you start seeing some things on the downside or down below. Uh, you know, those higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, lower high. You know, if you get that lower high, you're probably no longer in a minor uptrend. You're probably now printing candles below the EMA. You may be looking at the short term EMA crossing below the long term. You may be looking at the RSI getting below neutral when you start to see these things these are indicators that the trend may be coming to the end so these are things to just help you identify are you going with the trend or are you going against the trend because in my mind i want to be going with the trend unless thor has a signal that tells me get in here and get out here because that's where we're probably going to have the retest which it does quite often, right? That's why when Thor says, get in here and take profit, I take the profit. Because a lot of times it will be a retest area. It won't necessarily be going with the main trend, but it has specific data for those ranges and high probability. So it makes those calls. But I'm going to close this and we're going to jump into some charts. Um, Give me just a second to pull all that shit up. <clears throat> okay. Um, this, what is this? Okay, we're gonna start. We're going to brief over Bitcoin, as always. Um, 
you know, I might even look at a chart that we're not printing on just to uh, just to do something different for a minute here. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this Matic chart. I'm just going to remove everything that's on it. Okay, I'll even go remove. Well, I don't want to delete that because then I'm going to have to change the colors and shit again. Okay, so you you guys able to see my trading view stream? Yeah. Okay, cool. So first thing to note, just looking at up here, this is where you change. You know, if you want to look up Bitcoin, if you want to look up Solana, whatever you're looking at, Matic USDT, here's all the different places that I can potentially trade it or look at charts. Binance, KuCoin, OKC, Coinbase. So whatever you're trading one, it's a best idea to use that chart, right? So from there, you have the time frames up here, right? We pretty much stay on the four hour time frame while we're on Trader Tuesday. I always let you guys know if I change it. Um, but what that means is every four hours it prints a candle and a new one starts. So you see here in 41 minutes and 20 seconds, this current candle, this current candle will close and a new one will start. And it will either start printing green or start heading down purple. Uh, the only reason I don't have green and red is because it burns my fucking eyes out of my skull. In case anyone's wondering, I just made my charts a little softer on the eyes because I stare at them too much. Um, okay, so we're going to start with... Uh, Fearless, you asked about the indicators. So if you go up here, you see indicators. And okay. the fish oil. What's up? I don't know if someone was asking a question or hot mic in. Uh, I'm going to continue unless you have a question. Anybody? Tell them once. So All right. Um, so you can type, go to indicators, and you can just type in RSI, and you can see I already have the stochastic RSI star, but I'll just click on it, and you can see it is now added an RSI down here to my chart. And there's different versions of it. Um, I guess I should look to see which one this is since this is the one we've been using. Um, I guess that's just the RSI, not stochastic. Yeah, I think that's just regular RSI. Nope, definitely not that. What in the fuck did I just do? All right. Um, so I'll figure out which one this is, but you just hit add and it'll add it in. Um, you know what I mean? You can type the EMAs, add that in. That is so. And then here's your list of indicators, right? Okay. RSI strategy. Yeah. Get rid of that. Let's fucking no. I don't know what. Okay, I just fucked myself up. Um, I'm gonna turn on the EMAs though. And now I'm gonna go back and look for that RSI. Nope, that ain't it either. I was going to use the stochastic for right now. Uh, but you can add and remove indicators as you wish. You can change colors. Um, 
but mode could you change be better the settings? Yeah, no shit. I'm like, I got myself all <laughs> fucked up. I don't know how I uh, where what what that RSI I was using is because it's now gone. Um, <laughs> but we've talked about the first thing we talked about was the major trend, right? So if we look, our kind of major trend is going down. And I wish I could get rid of these, whatever these numbers are. Because that would be easier. There we go. Okay. So our overall trend is kind of a downtrend, correct? We can kind of agree on that. So that's the first major thing to take into consideration. The second major thing to take into consideration is what's your short-term trend? Well, a kind of shorter term trend is going down also, isn't it? Right? Well, the fact that we've got kind of prices below our trend, prices below our trend, this white RSI is the median. You can see it follows price action faster than the blue. So, our candles are printing below the EMA, and our short-term EMA is below the long-term EMA. Um, and the RSI is pretty much topped out, which says it's running out of steam. So the fact we're below our long-term, below our short-term, printing candles below, our short-term EMA, and the fact that our short-term EMA is below the long-term, and we could be running out of steam here, this this doesn't look like a time I want to go long. We, we don't have upward momentum. Now, what we can do is wait for price to maybe break, and find that higher low. You know, we always talk about the higher low and higher highs. And when we start getting higher lows and higher mm -hmm. highs, then we'd probably see uh, that. That's when we would probably see our EMA start to come up and eventually cross. You know, the longer term and start that more bullish momentum. So let's go back on the chart and look at a spot that kind of has that. So we get an idea of what we're talking about. But does that make sense so far of, you know, you look at the long term, price is below it. And you can look at kind of since we started this downtrend, right? You can see the EMA is finding resistance and not breaking above. You can see price is finding resistance and not breaking above. You can see most of the candles are printing down below it, right? All this kind of tells you that the trend is your friend until the end. So, yeah, maybe you're here and you didn't get in the trend in the beginning. You're like, oh, well, I kind of missed where it started going down. The trend is your friend till the end. The trend is still going. The trend right now is still going, right? So, but let's go back and look at, I'm going to have to go to a shorter time frame chart. It really doesn't matter what time frame chart we're on. Um, the RSIs and everything kind of work the same. Um, maybe do a little. Okay, um, so go I ahead. Have question, I have a question. Uh, what does RSI mean, and and um, how do we know which, which indicator is is the best for us? Yeah. Um. So the RSI. You can you can think of the RSI almost as a FOMO meter. I'm trying to find 
the one I see. There it is. Fine. Relative strength index. It's called relative strength index. The one that we always use. Relative strength index. So I'm going to get rid of these other fuckers. And that's what RSI means. But so mm -hmm. what we look at the RSI is kind of a FOMO meter. Um, and I, I have talked about this before, and, and we, we'll, we'll talk about it a little more right now while I'm changing some of these colors. Um, but think of it as a FOMO meter. It kind of lets you know it, it, how price action is moving in strength. Do we have bullish strength or is it looking kind of bearish? And I'll show you how we can kind of tell that, right? So down here is our RSI. Up top, uh, may, let me make these lines just a little thicker. It's probably hard for you guys to see on stream. Um, Make that a little thicker. So while while Mode's doing that, I can give you my interpretation of RSI. You know, it's essentially like a momentum indicator. Um, it's going to give you a depiction of how the price is really changing on a scale of one to one hundred. It can give you like strong buy or strong sells, and like what what Mode keeps referring to is like a FOMO meter. When you're using the RSI and it gets topped out into those upper ranges, you know, that's like a really good indication of FOMO, maybe overbought, you know, things of that nature. And to the same degree, when it's lower, it's you know, those are the tops right here, like Andy's talking about, it's spiking up above the red line. So, yeah, indication so the top could be coming. Yeah, like a momentum indicator is the momentum keeping up. Is it slowing down? And it's like a, a a good, I'd say, sentiment touch on what the market is doing. Oh, do you think that's pretty good? Yes, exactly. I, I and that's why I kind of say it's a FOMO meter. Um, and and you can see here we're getting all the way. We're, we're, and the reason I have this green is because when I start seeing price getting down below here. This is when I want to start consider buying. When I see price getting up above here, um, I actually set them just a little higher. I like to set that at uh, 75 and lower this to 25, just personal settings. But when I see that I'm getting below here, I, I think, okay, I want to be looking. Maybe this is a time to get ready to buy. Right. So the what the way I think of it and like to explain it is let's think of this middle line as neutral. Right. If you're below neutral, you're not really moving. You're not really doing shit. But if you get all the way down here, you're fully recharged and kind of ready to go. Right. And uh, let's go to the four hour just because that's what we usually trade on we'll we'll look at the this on a soul chart real quick uh for the rsi um what i often say is think about a car uh right and if you're down down here you're getting charged up ready to go but if you get up here and your red line in your vehicle you need to fucking relax a little bit and take a chill. And what, what happens once it started topping out here? It came down and eventually came back down pretty low. And actually got down below. And it's like, okay, now it's time to get moving again, right? And what do we see right now? We're getting down in this range. So it's time to start keeping an eye on when we start getting momentum again. But vice versa, once you get above neutral, right and you kind of find support on it right you're you're in that upward momentum until what until we redline the fucking engine there and it needed to cool off some so 
that's kind of what how I look at it is this is a FOMO meter. If it's if it's below neutral, but not below the green, I kind of say, yeah, we're we're really not moving. We're kind of dead. Price is going down. If we're above neutral, but not red line in the engine, hey, we're bullish. We're moving. We're moving at a good pace. When I see we're red line and okay, we're overpaced and we need to cool down. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Perfect. So I'm going to go back to that Matic chart just because there's not other shit drawn on it. And so, yeah, again, we can look at the RSI and say, here we started seeing it top out, start paying attention. And if we had our line drawn for our uptrend, you know, it would have been something. Oh, come on. I hate when this lags because I'm streaming and my lines jump everywhere. Um, would have been something kind of like that. Now, we are going to go into shorter term just to kind of identify what we were just talking about with uh, that sheet of identifying kind of what momentum we're in and what we think we should do. So we can even start here. You know, we have a low, and right here we have a higher low. So we can even start our trend line off of one, two, is where our trend line can start, right there. So to me, okay, we just we just redlined. Now we found a higher low, right? Now we're moving up and price looks to be finding support on the EMA. Price looks to be finding support above neutral. And then what happened? When we found support here on neutral, we found support on the EMA, we pumped, and we got across. See where the white, the EMA, the short term breaks above? That's our first indication that this shorter term downtrend may be over. So again, we're looking for indicators, indicators that something may be happening, right? So we get and we what do we so this to me is where i would look to potentially make entry why because we are holding a higher low we are above this trend line we're finding support coming back up above the emas and we found bullish cross so i would think about looking to go in here and if i did where is my? I would put my stop below the last low, right? Because I don't want to start making lower lows. Lower lows can mean I could go down. Now, where would I look to take profit? Probably on this initial resistance line that has been in play for however long, as you can see. So you can make this initial resistance line off of this point and this point alone. So that's where I would have been looking to take profits at. Also, right in this zone before we topped out, uh, you know, so I would be looking to take profits right in there. I wouldn't have got maybe the full profit, but, you know, close enough. I would have taken that. Three to one risk to reward. That's a good trade in my book. That's a safe trade. You know, finding we now have a higher low. We now have a higher high, right? So here's our high. So we have our low, a lower high compared to here. I'll draw it out. This might help if I draw it out. I hope I'm not losing you guys. I'm, I know I get a little fucking ADD and start going and whatever, but so if we consider this our high, right? Here's now our low. Well, this is a lower high, you know that, but we do have a higher low. This higher low is our first indicator that something might be changing. What's our second indicator? We now have a higher 
high, right? Our high is higher than this previous. Well, you don't want to FOMO in now. Look, your FOMO meter is saying we're getting up here. We don't want to FOMO in now. When do we want to, what, what, what do we always say? The break and the retest. So if we get a retest that's still holding the higher low, that's a spot that I'm going to look to go in on. Because then what are we expecting? Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Then what do we get here? A lower high. Then what do we get? Lower low. Now is an indication that we're going down. So we broke that, right? We've now broke this, this trend. It's been broken. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high. Lower high. Lower low. See, so now what are we expecting? It, uh, you see it correspond with the RSI too. Yep, exactly. You see where we start topping out? This is saying, hey, pay attention. Now you, you this the RSI isn't it isn't gonna tell you what price is, but to me, when it's saying, hey, we're finding a support above neutral, we're, we're kind of staying bullish. When we are bottoming out, this could be, this is where I want to think of this may be the new low, right? And then what do we get? The higher low from that. Perfect. Okay. When I see it starting to top out, right? And here it's starting to top out, but we still got the higher high. Okay. Now it's starting to top out and we got the lower high. That's the first indicator. Now we're getting the lower high and again, break and retest. And then where do we go? Lower high, or I'm sorry, lower lows, lower high, lower lows, lower high. And you see how the trend kind of continues, right? Um, so, and again, what happens here when we get this lower high and we, we start to break here? We also get more candles printing below. We also get the cross. See, the white is now below and couldn't find support. It found resistance and is now moving below. Does I know this is a little more high level than using Thor, but I wanted to go over this with you guys because I, you guys that are coming in each and every week and asking questions, I can tell you guys are learning more and really interested in learning more. Um, so this is, these let me know even simply knowing, am I above or below my main trend? Am I above or below the shorter term trend? Am I above or below the EMA? Am I in a bullish cross? That kind of lets me know, do I think this Thor signal is valid or is it headed toward that zone? Is it is it respecting my trends? And if it is, you know, if Thor is calling for a short somewhere, and along, you may think, okay, that's probably, that could potentially be just a higher high and then making low, or is that the higher high? Depends. Where where does it call? Uh, are you still respecting your trend? You know, this trend would more so have been set, you know, this initial line one, two there. But after you get more bullish momentum, I would have connected my lows like this. And then after we got more bullish right there, I would have connected, come on, quit jumping. I would have connected this low and this low, and that would be the trend I'm really respecting. So, you know, even here, we found support and we started to pump, but then we found resistance and we didn't get the higher high, right? The fact we didn't get the higher high Let's me know, okay, be careful, and sure enough, we got the higher low. Um, if you want to look at it closer, 
you can even see where we broke, where we got the cross, we broke retest. We found resistance on everything. The, the, the RSI found resistance on neutral. Price found resistance on our downtrend. Price found resistance on the EMAs. The EMA short term found resistance on the long term. So again, this might be a place I'm looking to make a, a short entry and put my stop above my last high, which I probably would have considered that just because that's a crazy wick. I probably would have put it, you know, above this high here. So I probably would have said somewhere like that. And then I'd be looking to retest probably level one or two of this. Um, probably right here where I found a bunch of price action. We found, you know, resistance, resistance. Then it became support. I probably would have been looking to take profit right in that range. And you can see we did have some action there good place to take profit because maybe it did want to go high. But what do we see? It ended up following the trend. And what happens? The trend is our friend until the end, right? So even if you took profits on your short, you can still get back in short if you're seeing the signals to do so, right? Um. Any questions on this before we start going to charts and looking at Thor and then we can get back into this. But I just wanted to give you guys something new this week for the guys that are here every week um, and, and been paying attention and reviewing the charts of, you know, the higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. How to make these trend lines. Using the EMAs is just another one of those indicators <clears throat> to show you those momentums. And when you compare, are you above or below your long term? Are you above or below your short term? Are you above or below printing candles on the short term? And you can always tell the short term because it stays tighter to price, right? Um, are you is your short term above or below your longer term? I make mine blue because I think of it. Am I above or am I below water? I don't want to be in a long position and be underwater. It's just kind of the way my brain thinks of, about it. I, if I'm going underwater, I want to be short, right? Am I floating? Am I floating up or am I fucking is price drowning below water? So that's the reason I have it blue. Just a personal thing. I have so, a question. Uh, um, <clears throat> so sorry. Um, fire away, bro. First, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. The first uh, trade you you uh, have drawn in. Um, this it, one yeah. here. Uh, exactly. Um, the, the entry. Um, how do you know it's uh, it's a higher low and and uh, um, will not become a, a lower low? Um, are you waiting basically for the first uh, um, green candle or? or um, <clears throat> well, what I it, saw yeah. is I have this trend line right mm. that I could establish after this low and this low, and I can see when price wicks down to it, it tends to jump away, right? So now I see price wicking down and jumping away. I also see that we're getting kind of low down here, but we're not oversold. But here is where I start to notice. Now I'm finding I'm up above, right? The RSI is now above neutral. Price is starting to print kind of above can uh, above candles or we already got the bullish cross here and we're looking to kind of find support so i don't know that we are right yeah. what i know is right now we got a higher low and we have a higher high and this looks to be a higher low so what i know is if i make an entry protect myself Risk management 
and finding yourself on the right side of probability is profitable trading. That's the, that's the easiest way to sum up profitable trading. Risk management, having your stop loss, and that's why I would have had my stop loss down here at this last low, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, di I didn't want to enter right here and then put it, you know, say at that first candle or something. Um, fuck that up. Right? I didn't want to put it at this first candle because what if we come down to here and find support? We could come all the way down to here, find support, and it'd still be a higher low, right? And right. if we get that higher low, what do I hope to then see? A higher high. And if at any point in my trade, I start to see lower lows or lower highs, or let's say price action broke right here and started to come down, I would think about closing my trade right here now at the first mm -hmm. indication that, uh, that I might be going the wrong way if it doesn't hit my take profit. But so um, let me pull up this chart real quick and see. So this chart will show you where I would have made that entry without ever even looking at price or a candle. Mm -hmm. Without ever looking at a candle, without looking at an EMA, without looking at anything at all. Right here is where I was talking about making that entry. Now, how do I know that entry? Because we've got the higher high, right? We, or I'm sorry, we made the higher low. We've got the higher high compared to here. Now where, so that's the break. Now I want to look at the entering on the retest. So same thing, there was the downtrend, right? We got the lower high, okay, higher low. That's where I want to look to get in and ride up to the higher highs. So that's the same exact setup we literally just looked at without even looking at price action candles at all. Just by identifying those points of higher highs and higher lows. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Um, anybody else got questions on this before we're going to jump in? And I'm really excited to look at the charts from last week, the past two weeks, and look at what Thor's calling now. Um, any questions before we move on from this? Uh, when you what? say the EM, whenever uh, the EMA meets resistance, that just means uh, just like any other uh, chart line that meets resistance, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see kind of the white line tries to break and get above, and it doesn't. It it did break, but it can't find support on it and falls back in. It even here it tried. It it that's resistance, just like price. You know, price hits this, it's finding resistance. Finding resistance. Gotcha. Same thing as finding support. Finding support. Finding support, right? Gotcha. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're going to touch on Bitcoin quick. Uh, just so you guys know, now that Thornals is out, I'm going to be doing reviews on bitcoin more for the thornal holders and more specific and also with some btc pairings we're always going to quickly touch on bitcoin because it is the mac daddy and it is important to know what it is doing in terms of market conditions but we are going to start making these bitcoin calls and charts more for the thornal holders uh, for frogs, we're going to focus on Solana and all the other cryptos and everything that we have access to. But two weeks ago, um, we called, well, we called once we started breaking here, right? And then we said, look, 
we found resistance here. And if you want to go back and look, you can you literally, my words are marked. <laughs> Inside the Tuesday Trader Review, we said, hey, we're finding resistance right here. We were getting near what was a short call. Uh, the RSI had topped out. We had looked back and just seen, you know, that was a take profit area for one of uh, the calls. We also see it saw the take profit here and it's resisting off of them. We said this looks like a good time to open up a short and potentially ride down to the Bitcoin four hour long call, right? And so if you took that call, you know, we had our marker right in here. We were talking about as it was on, but we'll just say reasonable because then you find the higher low uh, and start downward momentum. You could have easily made an 8%, 8% uh, plus uh, more Bitcoin from what you had ready to fire away into this long call. Uh, this long call was interesting to me because we got so close to it twice. And when we hit here, we didn't quite hit the call, but we started making higher highs and higher lows on the shorter term, right? Looking at it like that. And we got to the take profit area. And I thought, damn, this, this four hour call may not fill. I think we filled here and didn't just quite hit entry. I think we just barely missed our entry. Thor said, fuck you. It left it valid. And the call filled and hit take profit. And let's see, from first entry point in order to first take profit, 18 hours. So congrats if you took the Thor call. We did call this last week. We let you know this four hour call was here. And we also gave you the short call here because we looked at the RSI. We said, look, we're, we're redlining. We just blew the fuck up real fast. I think we're going to calm down. So good on you if you made that anywhere from eight to 10%. And then if you took the Thor call, and made anywhere from uh, basically four to almost 5% on TP1. That may have hit TP2 here, I'm not sure, but take profit one. Congrats if you took these fucking calls. And I suggested, you can see where I left my box. And I said, to me, this was a completely, and you'll even remember this too, because you even jumped in. You're like, you don't need to understand this to use Thor. This is just kind of how Mode uh, is validating with his own TA. I said, look, we can come down. We can hit this zone. We can start making some higher highs, higher lows, hit take profit, and still be respecting our overall downtrend. And that is literally what happened. Um, if you remember me saying that on stream, um, that's exactly what happened. So I thought this was a completely valid Thor call um, because it, it, it totally respected the entry and the take profit respected resistance, and it did. So what are we looking at now? What we are looking at now is we have this 15 minute long that is close, but we have this uh, daily short, uh, actually two daily shorts, and this one pairs up with a daily and a four hour, which those signals usually to me look pretty damn good. Uh, what does this look like here to me? Maybe if we get a breakout, that could be, you know, uh, a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low into uh, the take profit of this here. You know what I mean? That's a potential. Um, we also have this little baby 15 minute long call, but I still personally. I'm still looking at this zone. 
This zone back here all the way on, when was this? The 13th of March. The way we blasted out of here and the way even right here, we had a little more retest in there. But the way we blasted out of here, I think we're going to come back and visit that zone. If not, maybe that's the zone we find support on top of. But for now, I'm still looking at price is below my downtrend. Right? What's up, eh? How you doing, bro? Um, price is still below my downtrend line, right? Still printing down below my major. Still printing down below my minor. Most of the candles have been printing below the EMA. My short-term EMA is still below my long-term EMA. Right now, we are below neutral, and it looks like when we tried to get up, we, we found resistance on neutral. We're below neutral now. To me, this says we could potentially see a little bit more downside. And I honestly think Max Payne, without me going and looking at the, you know, the charts to, to, to the depth chart and going and looking at where leverage is and everything, um, I, I think we could push back down to this 22.8 range to 23.7. Um, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if we come fill this zone, especially because, look, that would keep and respect our longest-term momentum trend we're looking at right now, right? So support, support. You can see once we got here, I added a new support line. We respected it here and took the pump into the daily short. That was like the very beginning of our – uh, Trader Tuesdays was making entry here and going up to this short, taking this short, hit all three, take profit ranges on that. And then we called to go short here, down to here. I mean, we've been fucking nailing it for you guys. Thor fucks. That's all I can say. Thor and a little bit of TA knowledge, you can be a profitable trader. Um, but anyway, I think we may revisit this zone. And if we do, I am ultra bullish. Uh, if we hold 22,800, we hold 22,800. I'm bullish. Mode, I want to chime in just super quick. A little TA, Thor, and then controlling your emotions. That, yes, that's what you need. To yep, be a good trader. That's so part of it. We can teach you guys Thor, yeah, we can teach you guys TA. Do, you do have to learn the game of being a trader. And Bro, I'm just letting like, you know, you kind of sound cliche. like, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going robot frog, kind of like JT on our team calls. Um, yeah, yeah I, I had to give yeah, that little great. shout out to you there, JT. Yeah, you, you, you got the robot frog I'm going, but I got the guess that I will. <laughs> um, so, again, what we said earlier. Uh, risk management and finding yourself on the right side of probability is su successful, profitable trading. So managing your emotions, looking at what the data is telling you, managing your emotions and managing your risk, Thor is very good at putting you on the right side of probability. 82% on Solana last week of being on the right side of probability. If you have good risk management and you are on the right side of probability 82% of the time, you're going to find your profits growing quickly. Wait, did you um, just say did you just say last week alone uh Thor's so call was at 82? Last week Thor calls, uh, I believe, oh, between, calls I'm not, I think it was the one hour, four hour, and daily. Um, yes, it was about 82% of the calls that went active hit take profit one. Oh, that's great. 
That's fucking insane is what that is. That's numbers that people don't believe and won't believe, and rightfully so, to be skeptical of until they see it in action, right? That, that, that's the difference. The people that use Thor, it's the same reason the people that have soul frogs bought, bought Thornals, because they see the power. Week after week, they see the power, and they know other people will as well. So let's go frogs to Solana. Well. Frogs fuck hard, bro. Um, here's what we saw for Soul. So if you remember a couple weeks ago, we said this looks like a great entry point. Two weeks ago, we said that. Why? Because we broke our trend. So we got the break and the retest right here on our resistance. Well, it also happens to be there right on that EMA line. We said this gold box is an excellent place to look to go short. If you can't wrote it down here to take profits, I suggested you did take some profits here. I, I hope you did. But we said, hey, we have another one of those boxes and zones that kind of scares me just like it did with Bitcoin. And I think it's going to be refilled. And I think we're ultimately going to see price visit between 1630 and 1780, which we got down to about 1735. So if you took this short that we called, uh, and the other thing, there was a Thor short right here too that we just missed. That was another thing we said. We said resistance, resistance. Long-term resistance line. It, right here, I mean price. If you look at what was the bottom, that now became the top, right? So this was support, support, support. That became resistance, resistance, and resistance. So if you took this call and wrote it down to here, you earned yourself 10 to 12% more Solana than you had. Excellent. If you continued to hold because we didn't break out of our downtrend, we respected our trends, we're still printing below the EMA, the EMAs are still below, and the RSI is still below neutral. So there was really no reason to sell, right? There was no indicator to sell, but no one goes broke by taking profits. So I said, take profits. Um, but if you held one down to here, you're now 18, even 20% in profit. Fucking excellent on you. Now, where we left off last week was we were looking at this orange triangle. And we found kind of support, support, and we were finding support here. And what I said was we want to see, this is just kind of noise. This is just sideways movement right here. Until we either hit a Thor call or we get price to break out and we find break uh, and retest and make a higher high, or we find a break and retest and go for the lower lows. Now, this is really the zone, especially you can see down here the RSI looks like it's getting close. If we start making some higher highs, or I'm sorry, higher lows in here, this is where I think we could break out. I really like these new Thor calls that were just posted for the four hour and daily, because in my mind, we could certainly be seeing something like this, where we'll then make the higher high, or I'm sorry, the higher low find probably the higher high and resistance here because look at all this price action in our triangle also right at the bottom of that door short probably find support here making a higher high now we go fill the call come to retest the zone and kind of the third leg is usually the largest. We went over this last week. The third leg is usually the largest to induce the most FOMO before the top. And then we could potentially from here see what? Man, that pattern looks awfully familiar. 
Anybody recognize that pattern? How many times have we gone over this pattern? Right? Yeah. That's, so that's right on point. This to me looks very viable for start paying attention and we can look at our RSI too. And we can see kind of here's where it's been a resistance, right? Just like price resistance. We can see the RSI's been hitting resistance. So if we start breaking above this, finding break and retest on the RSI, find a break and a retest on the downtrend, find a, a, a support on this zone. Man, that's all kinds of indicators to tell me that we could be going up. And you'll see a lot of times when you get this cross, like here's where the EMA is crossed. We, we were looking at Thor back here saying, wait, we didn't make the higher high. And now we made the lower low. These indicators are going to lag. Just like you see here was the cross, right? But we were paying attention back here. We got the higher low. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So we've got several of our own indicators to tell us that we could be going long. RSI bottomed out. Now it's finding support on neutral, right? So we had a lot of our own indicators before this cross. But that's when we found support and maybe this is what you want to find your full you know now this this right here is the zone right here that filled every one of our indicators at that point let me go over what i mean so right there what do i mean by that we are above our longer term, right? We're above our shorter term. The candles are above the EMA. Our short term EMA is above the long term EMA. And the RSI is above neutral, but not topped out. We literally hit above, 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 above. Go long. The trend is your friend till the end. You just establish your trend. Now, if you want to get really into TA and pay better attention, you can look at all these, but these could potentially be riskier, right? When you have all your fucking indicators line up, man, that that's when that's when I don't want to maybe just put 20% of my trade capital. Maybe that's where I want to go. Fuck it. I'm going 50 to 80% on this one. Which is nothing wrong with that as long as what? What's the other thing you have to always remember? As long as you manage your risk, right? So as long as you manage your risk, there's nothing wrong with going in a little heavier when you have all your indicators lining up. And you see what we did Yo, from Mo, here. Robot? You sound pretty good at the moment, bro. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we'll see what it's like in a couple of minutes. I will say 80% of your trading profile is a lot. I, I'm going to just take the devil's advocate here. And yeah, you know, 10% of your trading profile on a single trade is still a tremendous amount of capital. That is still a lot of capital to be putting forth on a trade. You know, I will second what Mode says. You know, when those indicators line up like that, 100%, it's okay to go a little bit fatter. But I would say personally, if you are, you know, keeping mind of risk management, you're either going to set, you know, a very aggressively tight stop loss and be willing to come in either, you know, above or below where you got in at originally. But, you know, 20 percent on of your trading capital on a single trade, for me personally, that's a heavy trade. And that's where you'll start getting to know your own risk tolerances as your trading style increases. My personal recommendation is to really take it slow. And I, I would never tie up more than 40% of my trading capital overall. And that's going to be really reflective of how like our tap contract works. You'll notice we've been sitting on about 40% liquid capital 
ready to go on a trade, you know, that's a pretty fat bag in terms of like a spot trading account. So this is when your own style will really start to express itself. And as you're learning how to trade, my, my friendly recommendation is to just take it slow and start fucking around with like 10 to 20% of your trading profile. Excellent, excellent advice, right on point. There's nothing there that I would uh, counter. You, you, you're absolutely on point. Um, <clears throat> my point is like, some, like, if I find all my indicators, I'm foolish. Maybe I said it wrong about how much capital to put in, but that is a trade that I am very confident in making um, with, when all my indicators line up like that. And, and that's why I just posted that sheet uh, which I, I will, I even know I made a fucking typo in it already. I will fix that. Um, but you guys will see what, which calls you're more confident in taking. It'll also help you understand how I identified this zone, right? I'm below my, I'm below my long term, I'm kind of below in the short term. Now, yeah, price did pump up, but we hit resistance. We hit resistance on neutral, and we hit resistance on the EMA. I mean, everything to me says the only thing that's not down in this is candles printing above the short term. But we're finding resistance on everything else. So, so just understanding some of this stuff will help you understand what door calls seem reasonable or or your own ta uh because remember a lot of times i will use door calls like for instance if i if i do if we do make higher lows and higher highs here if i take a long position at this point you're fucking right the thor short calls are my take profits does that make sense but it lets you understand more the potential momentum and movements and to feel like if you are still moving in what is called verse well if it gets here because i know i i know two weeks ago when we were up here and talking about it this range down here seemed almost impossible it's like and look at what we're doing and it looks like we're still possibly going up like this range seemed impossible but here we are back in it right so um it just kind of lets you know what price action is doing and if it feels like it's respecting your trends um let's great, let me great, great explanation mo i love it Oh, wow, what's up, bro? Good to see you again, man. Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that fucking uh, guy? I just showed long, up. Long-term <laughs> homie and now frog holder. You know, I just wanted to come in here because Andy owes me $20 and he's been screening my calls. <laughs> fair, fair. I know. I can't help it, bro. <laughs> can't help it, man. That's it, got me. Okay, so I'm going to pull up. Uh, I'm going to close this stream. And we are going to take a look at Thor. So there are a lot of calls right now for Thor, as you can see. And we actually have a 15 minute call that's active. Um, Soul right now is at seventeen ninety nine. So clearly, you missed the entry zone because you're pretty much closer to the take profit than you are the entry. So uh, it's not one I would potentially look to get in right now, um, unless you're really finding support. And it, hey, man, if you look on the fifteen minute chart. And you're above the long term, above the short term. Candles are printing above, and your EMAs are good. Maybe you do want to take that up, up for the extra percent or so. That's up to you. But um, what we looked at uh, <clears throat> was more the four hour and the daily that I printed out on the chart. There are these 
so one hour shorts so potentially look for them uh i didn't mark them on because they are one hour calls and i tried to stick to just the four hour and the daily for us um i did put that 15 minute on there uh the 15 minute long uh because we are close to potentially hitting this one on stream i i don't know that we will but we'll see um so i did put that one there um all right can i interrupt with one short thing real quick mode please bro so y'all will notice that there are some people and this is really fucking add but uh there's times when you'll look at a Thor call and you'll say like, oh, dude, there's a fat short sitting up here on the one day or the four hour. I'm going to go along right here and ride it up to the short, you know, or or vice versa. I would really recommend against that just as you guys are starting to learn how to interpret Thor calls. Um, take them in the range that they suggest. Um, it, it's calculated for a reason. And so it is more on the speculative side if you take it in anticipation of that call, because who knows what's going to happen in between. There's a lot of variation. There's a lot of problem, like variability in how those calls are going to, what noise are you going to have to sit through to get to that fucking zone? You know, so if you do see like a big, fat, juicy short on like the one day, you know, don't say, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to take it long and ride it up till there. Some people do that. Charge is a really big person who does that but his risk management skills are phenomenal. And so as you're learning, I would just recommend waiting until hitting the call when it's actually in the zone. Very good point. And another mm -hmm. point about Thor that goes along with that, that answers a lot of questions that come up almost week e each week. This daily short is not saying that price is going to come up to this point. That's not what it's saying. What this is saying is if, if price comes and fills this zone, there's a high probability that it's going to go short and retest this zone. It's not saying that from here, price is going to pump up and hit this. And it's not saying that this is the top if we do start going up and it's going to start going short from there. That's not what Thor is saying. What Thor is saying is if we fill this four hour narrow, narrow four hour call, there's a high probability we will retest this point. If Solana price pumps and fill hits this zone, there's a very high probability that we retest this zone. So, and I want to like uh, Andy. Was, different... Oh, sorry, brother. Go ahead. I was going to say, just like Andy was saying, it, Thor's not saying that's where we are going. We're we're going that. It's not saying that. It's saying if we do, this is a high probability entry and retest zone. And so, and he's one hundred percent right. And to expand on that. And to give you guys another way of thinking about, you know, how to interpret the short signal, you know, shorting is inherently more risky. We've talked about ways that you're managing your portfolio. You're either doing spot trading or you're doing perpetuals trading or likely a mixture of both once you really get your chops up. One of the ways that I personally interpret uh, shorts is that that's a really good high target for some of my spot bags that I'm holding for, for who knows how long. I'm still holding $8 Solana, you know what I mean? And so when we get into these shorts, I'll do one of two things. I'll, I'll take profit on some of my spot bags. So I'll actually sell some of the, like a small portion of the asset, generally somewhere between five and 10% on like a one day call. Cause I'm macro bullish. I don't give a fuck and I don't want to risk my bags in case we giga pump. Um, and at the same time, I might open up a small hedge. And so that would be actually opening up a small short at those intervals, because if the trade goes the wrong way, say we fucking giga pump to Valhalla, my spot bags, I still have 90% of, and I'm fucking super happy about that. And at the same point in time, I mitigate any losses that I would have on my hedge. And so 
that is one way, depending on your trading style, that you can really interpret the calls differently. And short may not mean short to you. It may just mean take a little bit of profit on my spot back. Excellent, excellent point. Um, and if you have Solana you've been holding, or I go, sorry, bro, what was up? Oh, no, I just wanted to add to that. I mean, I uh, Andy cut out about emotions, right? When you're when you have bags, you're and your trade goes wrong, do your emotions are, are in a little bit of a better state because you don't feel like you fumbled at all. So, I think that's super important to like. Like, I think that was a good point you made, Andy, is like, when you got your spot bags, you're, you're, I've been in a position where I had nothing and I got liquidated or just the trade went wrong. And I was like, damn, I should have just bought spot. But if you just have, you know, it's, I think it's important for the emotional component to trading is to, you know, it's not always a bad idea to have some spot, you know, especially Absolutely. if you enjoy the asset. It, yeah, if you're I, bullish on the asset, like it. Or if you think Solana is going back to a hundred dollars, do you care if you bought it at eighteen or if you bought it at twenty? Not really. But if you're holding Solana, you know, say say you buy some here. If we do make this point, or let's just say you have some already, you could potentially sell. Uh, like Andy said, he'll maybe sell ten percent max. Of the Solana he's holding, he'll sell it here on the daily call and then buy it back and be able to buy 7% more Solana with the Solana he already had, right? So, and you it, just nailed my favorite trading strategy. That is how there I there you go. Trade. And it's not going short, it's literally you're taking profit, you're using the Solana you have and selling the Solana you have to uh, try to accumulate more. And if you buy Solana here and you sell it here and it pumps up to 25, you go, you know, that's where FOMO comes. Fuck, I missed out. No, just, just wait until it goes back down through another downtrend to buy it again, right? Um, it, it's it don't FOMO in, right? But if you can buy it back cheaper, buy it back cheaper. And if it continues to pump, great. The rest of your bags keep fucking pumping. That's why he still has ninety percent of it, you know. Um, and th this is this is how Sile will not speaking for Sile, but this is how Sile will advocate for using Thor. And it, uh, we, we touch on this each week that Thor is a spot trading protocol. And if you don't understand the difference between spot and contract and leverage and and that, we, we have those DGEN definitions printed in the Tuesday Trader Review. But this is where, you know, you, you don't Are have you to open a short contract or go short. You can take profits and buy back. So are you and Andy saying that you wouldn't, like, for starting off trading, you wouldn't use margins, uh, like, for leveraging? You would only stick on spot? No. no. Um, I'd say a little bit of, you know, that's a hard one, bro, but sort of what we were talking not about. Not leverage. Earlier, not leverage. I wouldn't suggest <laughs> leverage. If you want to open up, say, some contracts and do some shorts, great, but I wouldn't suggest leverage. Yeah. And what we were all talking about earlier, the longer you're in crypto, the longer, the more you'll see the value in holding spot bags. You know, a giga pump can come anytime. You know, we have no idea. Um, but if you don't have a healthy bag of spot, you know, likely I would say start there first. Gotcha. Gotcha. You're just saying, just having the asset on hand, basically. Yeah, dude. Like, look, I got wrecked on a fucking dot call the other day. Um, I had bought a pretty good size amount of dot, didn't go the right way, and instead of me having a worthless fucking contract, well, I staked my dot for fifteen percent APY, and so I can mitigate any losses there, and it's not going to be three dollars forever, and I'll have, you know, who knows how much extra dot. So, 
there is inherent value in holding spot assets, especially when they're assets, one, that you're fundamentally bullish on, and two, that there's shit you can do with it. Fucking DeFi. Solana. You where where did you stake your top? You know what's fucking hilarious, bro? I staked it through Coinbase, and then I was like, man, fuck this. They're only giving me 11%. And then I, uh, I, I transferred it over to my trust wallet. Y'all know I'm a big BNB maxi. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, I staked it on my uh, trust wallet for 15%. No shit. I'll have to look back into trust wallet. I used to use it and have them for quite some time. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, it's the shit. You know, and that's the thing, too, is a lot of these coins that we're talking about, Cardano, Kusama, even, you know, it, and it does take a little bit of research to learn where and how to stake them and shit like that. But that's one of the ways that you can really specify which asset that you want to trade. Trade ones that you can stake. Trade ones that, you know, you're happy putting in a liquidity pool. For me personally, there's two pairings that I really am bullish on. Bitcoin and Ethereum and then Bitcoin and BNB. Let's say both of my trades go the wrong way. I still have four, you know, two liquidity pairs and three assets that I'm happy having more of either one of them. And so I'll put them in as a liquidity pair and I will make, you know, anywhere from two to 20% sometimes on deposits, you know, and that's a really fundamentally strong strategy that is hard to go wrong with. You know, it doesn't matter. If yeah, the good, uh, right. good insight on that. Never really considered it. Or, or uh, uh, you mean five, like you know? when I'll, you mean like when I'll be able to put my Bitcoin and Solana against each other in a paired contract <laughs> and just stack sides? You're building something. Huh, man. Huh. And look, wow. And here, I would, like, just imagine that. <laughs> and super quickly. Look, this is what we have planned. These fundamental strategies aren't new to our ecosystem nor our frame of thought. These are what ultimately we're applying into the automated contract. It may not be suited to people's specific risk tolerances. It may be less risky. Y'all have no idea how many times I get fucking bored with Sile and I tell him to fucking go and do some more degen trading and he's just like, no. You know, and it always works out in the end. But these automation of liquidity providing understanding you know this is what we're teaching you now for your own personal management and this is what we're applying in the future to the protocol when we can no doubt well i said to to, to just to make things simple again and put it in perspective Profitable trading is good risk management and finding yourself on the right side of probability. Andy was just talking about this dot call. He was not on the right side of probability on his call. So how did he mitigate his risk? Well, he didn't cut losses and, and sell it like you would have to do if it's a spot contract, or I'm sorry, if it was a contract of some type. It's spot. He's mitigating his risk by staking it to earn more of that asset and then giving it time. So that is his risk management in this trade is staking and time. You know, the risk management doesn't always mean having a stop loss, right? Um, it, it all depends on your trading style and everything else. Um, and Here's going to be a fun one. Rumpty, you there, bro? Oh, yeah, bro. What's good? <clears throat> uh, you know what's fucking good. Oh, we'll yeah. Go I know what's good. Up, I, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Omi. Before I do, I haven't touched this chart. This chart has been screenshotted. You guys saw this chart drawn out two weeks ago. I'm like pretty fucking proud of myself on this one but before i even pull the chart up for you to look at one of the main points why this all ties together is omi uh ecomi uh omi is the call sign but it's ecomi it's a token that disney among other things uh 
are looking at adopting using whatever, right? It, regardless of that, it is a token that Rumpty is bullish on in the long term and thinks this is an asset that he wishes to accumulate more of over time. So he is buying it when he thinks it's low and is holding it not to make money next week, not to make money next month, maybe not even next year, but long-term bullish on this asset, right? So now I'm going to pull up the chart. <clears throat> Are you fucking kidding me? All right. Like, that's crazy. Are you for real? Let's go back to the very first time we looked at it. I don't know what time frame we are looking at it there, but we recall a breakout, take profit, take profit, right? Yeah, Remember it was that? before that first breakout on the yeah. left. Yeah. Okay, right here, we said this is, if we break this, this is your resistance. You should take profit here, and you should buy back here, which I believe you did. Yeah. That's why that box is there. Then we drew these boxes, and then we said these are your two take profit points for sure. I think you may have taken a little bit, but then held on. And what did we say? This looks like the inverted head and shoulder. And I told you, if we don't get a new high, take fucking profits. I wasn't paying attention. And you said, did you look at the OMI chart? And you took profits in here when you saw we weren't making the new high. Right? Yeah. That we said we're probably the going to me. Yep. Yep solidified it because we didn't make the new high we got the the lower low lower high what were we expecting lower low then we expected the lower high down to the lower low and i was saying since we had this zone before we could maybe find support in here if we find support in here this is a good area to dca also we could drop down into the bottom of this zone and whichever whichever one of those zones kind of hits and fills and respects that trend line would be your good DCA area. So on an asset that Rumpty was buying down here and just holding for years to come, right? was able to take profits here by close to 20% more. Didn't open a short, right? None of this is, is, is taking a short. All he did was sell the some of the OMI he had, bought it back here for 15% more, or less, I'm sorry. So he got 15% more OMI for his money took a portion of profit here at around 10%, then took portion of profit here around 30%, and is now looking to use those profits just to buy more OMI 25% cheaper than what he sold it for. Yeah, so well, nowhere is he opening <laughs> a contract, nowhere is he using leverage, Nowhere is he using a short or a perpetual. He's literally just buying the spot asset and selling the spot asset. And it's, fuck, you, good on you, bro. I, I wish yeah, I was following that trade with you because I have my I own. Mean, dude, that's my life thanks right? to this thing, too. Thanks to this Trader Tuesday. <laughs> so, like, right? you know me, I just buy the shit and hold it and then just, oh, it's cheaper. Let me buy some more. It's like, you know what? Let me actually try this. There you go. You know what's bro. funny? There you go. Mode and I were on the call of a phone call before the Trader Tuesday, and he brought up your trade specifically. He was like, I should have taken that fucking trade. <laughs> and like, I was uh, I was telling him, you know, and it's what we want to tell you guys too. You're going to miss some fucking good trades. You know, this shit happens every day. It's OMI today. Yep. It's, 
It's whatever tomorrow. It's who gives a fuck. It's learn the fundamentals of trading and learn how to use Thor. And surprise, surprise, you know, the same sort of mentality for stock trading as well. And soon you're going to have Thor on your side for stock trading. Also. Frog so, smoke, let's go. One of the oh. things to keep in mind, I, I, I used to actually get upset if I missed a trade, right? Like I'd be upset with myself, even angry. And again, don't trade emotionally. And if you're getting emotional about it, take a step back. But one of the things that that's just human nature, right? Especially in anything competitive and especially if it's something competitive, like with your finances. Um, emotion can creep in, but this isn't like, this isn't like the, uh, like basketball and you missed the shot and you blew the game. The game never ends. You're going to get another shot. I promise you. There is always another trade. And if, if, especially if you're a giga whale, um, but there's always another trade. Uh, so don't don't get pissed or FOMO in or be mad you missed one. In fact, look look at how many trades Thor is calling for you right now as potential next ones. Okay. And this is just with the whale roll status. This isn't even giga whale. Okay. So that's just these assets and how many assets do we have total now andy and now andy doesn't want to talk okay great, great no, 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 no sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. i'm doing like seven things at once uh we have 25 total for solana and then i believe 20 i only 15 are live on bitcoin right now depending on which tier that you have um, but we do plan on releasing Thor for the top 100 coins. That's our goal overall, and we'll tie those into the um, to the tiers. Non chill fucking recommendation: get 24 frogs. If you can't get 24, get to nine. Um, I dude, like fucking. It's a weird thing. Y'all know I don't ever want to be like all fucking chilly. We're not trying to extract capital. It's none of that. It's just the fucking system that we have built out, right? And this is how we're going to be rolling it out in the future. The Kira sort of involvement for those tier levels, plus the amount of access that you'll get, will outweigh having to pay via a subscription model at 9 and 24. Um, I know that 50 and 100 is pretty far out of the league if, if it's, you know, maybe uh, you're a recent sort of addition to the team or family. But uh, 9 to 24 frogs. One of those will be really beneficial if you're looking to actively be a trader they will have an impact on how you get access to the stock signals as well. And we will be rolling out Forex signals in the future also. So nine is a good goal if it's financially reasonable for you. Now, if neither one of those tiers are reasonable, that is free lifetime fucking access. I've told you guys also for a long time, we'll be rolling out a Kira subscription model for access to Thor. That's one of the things that we have for a really viable use case for Kira. It will be more expensive in the long run, but it will be a way for you to either test the waters, take a 30 day fucking trial run. Maybe you want to go for 60 days, whatever it is, but a Kira subscription model will get you access um, in the future, I'd say within the next month or so. But uh, before that fucking happens, the whole thing is, hey, they're fucking free for frogs. So just a little bit of a heads up on that. Yeah, just a I'll quick question. Quick question on that, because obviously now I got to get fucking nine. Uh, does that, is that like only nine soul frogs? Or like if you have Thordinals, does that count in the nine? Uh, there are two different things. So it is nine soul frogs, and then the tiers on Bitcoin for the Bitcoin pairings is one, five, and nine. Nine right, is sweet. the most applicants on the Bitcoin. Yeah, just wanted to check. I want to just. Yeah, and here's one thing I want to just be really fucking clear with you guys about. I hope this is one of the reasons y'all are part of our community. We're not here to extract fucking liquidity. We've given you tools to build uh, a lifetime of wealth accumulation. That's not what I want to do. 
at one point and at some point in the fucking future, there will be no cyber frogs for sale on secondary market. That's my fucking goal. That's Sile's fucking goal. And it is lifetime access to everything that we do on a tier basis, tiered basis. Um, that's just one thing to be mindful of as you are exploring if trading is the right fit for you. Having frogs in the long run will be more beneficial than paying for Kira subscription model um, when it comes down to the cost differentiation between those two. So just throwing that out there, do with it what you will. I love y'all, even if you have one fucking frog. It's not about that. I just want to give you guys ample one. I appreciate it, Andy. For real. I know it, the real ones know that you're not extracting fucking money, bro. Like, it's the gamification of NFTs, drives the NFT fucking demand, everything. So, I'm for it. I, Let's get it. I appreciate that. I like to think that that's why people fuck with frogs, is because we don't really do that shit, you know? But so, and super quick, here's a little Alpha Andy. You know, as we roll into TAP being how our trading services are presented to the broader audience outside of just Solana NFTs, you know, that's been our goal for a long time. That's what we're really actively working on right now. There will be an opportunity for them to get access passes. And that sounds a lot like a fucking NFT token, doesn't it? They're not going to know that they're interacting with NFTs. They're not going to know that they're interacting with cyber frogs. I've told you that for like a fucking a year now or so but it is still going to create buy pressure on cyber frogs with people from a broader ecosystem, from whatever fucking blockchain you come from, BNB, Ethereum, Polygon, SUI, all these things that we have planned for expansion. Cyber frogs as the Solana NFT is that token that gives them access regardless. So as we scale tap outside of just this little fucking tiny ass bubble that we're in, Solana NFTs, that, that is still the avenue that people need to have or the, the token that people need to have to interact with our services. So just a friendly heads up on that front. I've been saying it for like a year in our whale chat, but I want everyone to know what the actual fucking plan is, how cyber frogs are correlated and combined into that whole plan, and, and really why you should buy fucking cyber frogs instead of anticipating just using key to the services. All right, Andy out. That's a mouthful right there. Boom. Let's fuck. In this game, mine, you heard him mention Forex. And uh, crypto don't got shit on Forex when it comes to trading and volume and number of traders and the amount of people that pay for indicators and pay for alpha and pay for classes and everything else that he explained you will get lifetime subscription and why we think that there will eventually not be any frogs on secondary. Um, Have I mentioned that we're tokenizing stocks also? Have I mentioned that before? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> not <laughs> that I'm aware of. Can you that, elaborate? Like, that's alpha that I don't <laughs> think I do. Like, in the the house. House. Yeah, y'all are going to like Bus Life Andy. He's way more chill. <laughs> like his, yeah. So, all this shit, all that we're doing right now, we're playing with fucking crypto. We're playing with a $1.2 billion market cap right now for the entire fucking ecosystem. That's bullshit. That's fucking jump change. You look at Apple stock. Apple is a single fucking aspect of the stock market is already $1.4 billion. So, we want to take what we know we're good at. We want to take that same hit rate and we want to bring that bitch to Web3. You've seen a couple people do it before. You've seen a couple people try to do it before. And I hope our reputation really speaks volumes that we know what the fuck we're doing. And we will be tokenizing stocks and providing the ability to interact with stock trading on a Web3 basis. Applying Thor, applying Thor Automated. And now that you guys, this is cat out of the bag, stocks are going to be a, a tradable asset within Thor. You will have to pay Kira to get a stock call. You will do a one-time payment on whatever asset it is that you want. Let's just say Disney, fuck it. I'm gonna pay X amount of Kira and that's gonna populate all available signals that Thor is recommending across all four time frames. It is a one-time depiction of that asset. 
and you can go and you can manually trade with it. On the other side of things, and Sile is going to fucking kill me if y'all talk about this. They don't talk about this in Wastelands. But that same thing where we have preserved capital, we can apply it to stocks and we can apply it to tokenized stocks. You just saw Turtles. I don't know if anybody saw that. Turtles is fucking around with it like a little bit. Um, they're doing it like a really different way than we're going to do it. But it is going to be an automated asset class that we can automate for you guys also on top of that. So there you go. Dude, we're not going to if we've got look. If we've got tokenized stocks, why don't we have a DAX? We do. we do. No one uses it yet, though, because we have not spent <laughs> enough time on this development, fucking scaling it. We've been too busy with tap. But Dude, that's why we have it. All money. just adds up. It all. Oh just yeah, it does. Adds up. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I I honestly wasn't point. aware of the tokenized stocks. Well, I probably shouldn't have said anything, but I did. Don't fucking talk about it in Wastelands. I want y'all who are coming to the Trader Tuesdays to really get insight to where we're going. These things that you're learning right now as applied to crypto is fucking cool. Right on, yeah. And we can make a shit ton of money together doing that. Um, there's a lot of other commodities and assets that we can trade in levels of volume that's laughable comparatively to, to what crypto is trading. You know, it's a drop in the fucking bucket. You know what? Something that would paint a candle in crypto, they're never going to notice it. Forex, you can fire a hundred million dollar order, in, and it won't move, move a single fucking unit. So, anyways, just heads up. That's some of the future for frogs. That's some of why you should buy fucking frogs if you are bullish on what we're doing long term. Nine is a good number. Blah blah blah. Chill over. Frogs fuck. Frogs fuck. Heavy. Hey, I got a quick question. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't mind, <clears throat> fire away, bro. Uh, so. I currently got four frogs right now, and I'm just uh, I'm just out here repping. But I was wondering if there's anything coming to the bullfrog tier uh, anytime soon. Bullfrog is nine, right? No, bullfrog is five. I SWAT think right. Just fucking SWAT just redid the fucking tiers. So sorry if I sound like an idiot for I don't know. Yes, we will have a uh, like an intermediary sort of level at five. Um, I'm just going to be really honest with you. I would still shoot for nine if that's going to be within reason. Um, but we will make sure that five gives you enough access to trading signals that you can fucking buy the other four frogs just off your profit from trading. But yes, we are rolling out a new tier system. Um, it is going to be one, five, nine, 24, 50, and 100. And that is and it. You'll never nine is it. considered mini will, right? Or yeah, nine is mini though. And okay, that's really cool, the cool. best middle of the road. So one of the things that we're gonna do, and here fucking alpha and shit. Um, Thor Pro is something that we're giving out right now for everyone to really see the value in. Obviously, it becomes more important the higher level that you go because you're gonna have more assets that you want to sift through more quickly. Um, that is something that will be an additional add-on service as we roll out the key, Kira subscription model. And that is something that will be free once you hit a certain tier within our system. We are redoing the tiers. I told you that about. Well, that's what I was going with. I told you we're redoing them. We've been really consumed with ordinals right now. And so we haven't finalized that yet, but expect for that to be announced by the end of the month. Very cool. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the info. I mean, I, pl I trust me, I plan to get like a hundred of these little froggies, but you know, my wallet only goes so deep at, at this time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was just yeah. curious if there was anything short term, but trust me, I plan to get like a hundred of these bitches. Well, dude, get whatever's feasible for you and get whatever you find value in. There's a ton of opportunity all along the way. Um, five will be a valuable tier. It's going to be exponentially more valuable than just a single frog, though with a single fucking frog, you still get a lifetime access to Solana, and you can make millions of fucking dollars off just one frog. You know, let's be real. Um, but, yeah. So, so this this is the, the Thor Pro that Andy's talking about, that you guys can get access to, check out. Uh, some of the things that it, uh, in my opinion, allows you to do easier in the user interface 
is you can select, do you want to see all the calls or are you a person that you only want calls that are going to give you 5% or more, right? You're not interested in doing shorts or maybe you don't have, let's just say you only have USD. So you don't have any Solana or anything to take profits with. You can get rid of shorts. And there we go. If I have cash on hand, ready to fire, and I want a trade that's going to give me a minimum of 5%, I now know I can go look at Doge, one hour, here's my entry, take profit, remember risk management, uh, I only want to lose $20, uh, you know, let, let, let's say that's the max I'm willing to lose per trade, okay, here's my uh, how many Doge I want to buy and at what price and where I should put my stop loss, right? So remember to use the risk management next to these trades. But here you go, right away, you can see these trades. Let's say, well, I'm not really bullish on Doge or Litecoin. Maybe they're not ones that I want to hold longer term. Let's give it a little more breathing room, 3%. Arbitrum, um, you know, uh, okay, here's Sol at uh, 2% at least, or AVAX, you know what I mean? You can really break this down however you want. Um, and again, like I said, there's always another call. There's always another trade. Don't don't ever get mad at yourself because you missed a trade. There's always another trade, as you can see. So how, how and would I this get isn't even this isn't even half of the assets that are offered to GigaWheel. Sorry to cut off whoever that was. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess my question was, uh, so is this is this available for us now or is this going to be something that gets rolled out later or is this invite only type of thing? Or is this a bullfrog thing or like a like a whale thing or, or how, how do you get access to the Thor Pro? Thor Pro is for whales up right now, just because that's when you're in that territory of a lot of assets and a lot of time frames to fuck around with. Um, so it is whale up right now. It does make sense, but as we roll out more options and sort of apply it to other assets, Thor Pro goes towards any fucking commodity, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it is for whales only, and it is free for whales right now. Um, and like I said, and I'm not trying to be all fucking weird about holding shit out on y'all. We're just still trying to figure out the best way to do it so we don't make anyone feel fucked over. Um, but it should be and would be an additional... Uh, like an additional sort of service on top of the trading service. So, so are you planning Whale on having it um, not be, well, are you planning on adjusting it being available for whales in the future? Is that what you mean? We're, we're just trying to find, it's hard to fucking random ADD tangent. It's hard to find the best way to retain a profitable business and make sure that the, our holders and our family is feeling fucking good and taken care of. So likely it will be free for whales up or, or giga whales up. Um, so that's one of the things that we're trying to figure out. Right. Now. Like I said, give me a little bit of time now sure. to cool off after Thordinals and we'll have all of that announced and uh, just a super fucking obvious. Word. There you heard Alpha Andy fucking dropping it. And that whale Bro, status that this. you talked about was uh, nine frogs, right? That one is 24. So it will be free for 24 frogs or more. And just for instance, let's just fucking be hypothetical here for a little bit. Let's say we roll out a key or subscription model, and for you to get all 100 crypto assets, it's $100 a month. You can buy all crypto assets for $100 a month, and then you're going to say, well, there's a lot for me to fucking sift through. Holy shit. Oh, they got this thing called Thor Pro. It's a $25 add-on a month or something to that effect. So I hope you can see like that's the model that we're really trying to solidify right now because that's what applies to tech. 
Uh, okay, so 24 is the real goal to get the Thor Pro, and 9 is to get kind of like an intro if you're an intermediate trader. And then like 1 is like beginner. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we want it to be. Like, you don't need to go and blow your fucking load because I tell you Thor's so fucking great. Buy 24 frogs right off the bat. Fuck that. Buy one frog. Fuck around with the Solana signals. You'll quickly see we're not full of shit, you know? And you'll go from there. But our job right now is to do something that is very difficult, and that's to take people who don't know anything about trading and give them enough learning opportunities and resources to teach themselves and to then utilize our tools more specifically or, or more effectively. And that's why we're here on Trader Tuesdays. We want you guys to become master traders. We want y'all to become master Thor users. And once you know that, you're fucking swimming on your mm -hmm. own. So I think most everybody here has at least one frog, but if you don't, or if you only have, if you, if you don't have access to uh, Thor Pro, let's just say that, um, with one frog, you'll at least get the four hour and the daily time frames. And man, look at all these calls for Solana right now. You've got calls on the 15 minute, one hour, and then if you just have the one frog with the four hour and daily, it there you go. It's printed for you. Um, it's literally printing out what the, so the charts that I'm posting from Tuesdays week to week, the four hour, how I make those charts is I come into Solana. I look at the one uh, the one day, and I look at the four hour. I look at the entry points, and I look at the take profits, right? So I'm going to go to Solana and show you that. Like, so, again, you see we, we have the daily short here, and then if I change the time frame to the four hour, there you go. So give me one second. Come on, fucker. Bring the fuck up, boomer. There you go. Okay. Now, <laughs> so there's that four-hour call, and there's that daily short call. What I like to do is draw a box for the entry zone so I know what my range is. And then I draw a box for what my profit zone is and where TP1 is at. Uh, the last one that filled, perfect example, this four hour long. So we came in, this was the buy zone. You can see uh, Bitcoin came in, filled that zone. And then filled the box up and broke through take profit one. Maybe even hit take profit two. Not sure. Um, here is a <laughs> 15 minute long. Um, and this is one I thought could potentially hit soon. If, you know, we, we are getting up a little high. Uh, we are toward resistance. We did meet resistance there. We are about to potentially meet resistance on the RSI. Um, we could come down here, fill this 15 minute call, still be making a higher low, you know, and then hit resistance and take profit, whether it meets resistance and goes down or whether. It comes down, fills, take profit. No one gets broke taking profit, even if it continues out. At least you took some profit. Now you can look for take profit two or even three, right? Um, or if you have higher level of TA in some of the things we talked about and you want to go through that checklist, okay, have I made the higher low? Um, I now... Uh, you know, am I above in my trend line? Am I above in the short term? Are my EMAs on the right side? You know, maybe you want to look at taking profits longer, but you never get broke by taking profits. And that's what Thor is saying is if we hit here, we're going to at least test here. 
So, um, I gotta, I gotta actually get ready to close up tonight because I gotta get up early as fuck tomorrow. But I do want to give you guys some time for any questions or to go over any charts, anything else um, before I do. Uh, so anybody, please fire away about any of the stuff we talked about, um, you know, what I think. So I guess a recap on where I think we're at with Soul is, you know, obviously we broke out of that wedge from last week. We found resistance on it. Uh, I think right now we are potentially seeing a little more downtrend unless we find a higher low. That could potentially be the higher low. I'm going to check. Actually, throw a fib on this real quick. Right. While he's doing that, just super quickly, uh, I want everyone to know Moat does this as a volunteer just because he loves the community. He asks for like literally nothing in return. Um, if you guys find value in this, you know, one of the things that we always have said is our form of payment is just like appreciation. You guys just drop a exclamation point mode in Neo Tokyo Wastelands. Um, this is why we do this. We want to give you guys the resources that you need to learn. And mode has really graciously signed up to do this week over week. You have no idea how beneficial it is for, for I hope you guys see how beneficial it is for y'all. And just to reiterate how it, it impacts me. It is such a relief knowing that your guys' trading sort of learning beginning comes from somebody who volunteers his time, knows what the fuck he's talking about, and at this point has given you four weeks of profitable trading. And so drop a mode in comments mode. I'm about to bounce. I just wanted to say much love and appreciation, my friend. Yo, Mo, we um, love you, Bob. dude. Appreciate that, man. And say, safe travels, Andy. Uh, Bob, appreciate Bob. that. Bro, yeah, well, I mean, we 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 want everyone to be successful, and if you guys are making money, um, that's the fucking goal. Uh, money to me equals time, and time is ultimately what is most valuable, right? Um, so spending a little bit of time here each week, I hope, has been profitable. Spending time with frogs, hope is profitable. Um, and what I see right now actually looks somewhat bullish to me. Uh, the fact that if I take a fib here uh, and we did pretty much retest that gold line. If you've been on stream when I talked about mm -hmm. fibs before, um, I'm not going to go too in-depth right now just because I do have to hop off. Um, but I like to... Make my entry if I'm going to on the gold zone and set my stop loss above last low. My first take profit is here at the blue. And look how just uncanny without even setting fibs that lines up with where I thought price may retest because of the way it looks right here, right? I literally drew that green line bouncing off here without even having a fib. So my first take profit would be there. And my second take profit would be right here at this green line. And fucking look at that. We are right at the Thor short. Um, not financial advice. That's awesome. Do your own <laughs> research. Um, but... I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if we do tap just a little bit deeper into this zone. But, I mean, we have, if we find support here above neutral and start moving up, I mean, th this this could be pretty viable right there. Um, not financial advice, do your own research. Uh, you'd be looking at, I'd say, protecting your uh, potential loss of 3.75% and a gain here of 17%. And actually the, the top fib, where is the top fib? 
just short of the daily. Um, just short of the daily entry. So. I don't know where I pulled this from. I don't know where I moved that other thing was there. <clears throat> so, yeah, you can see here's calls each week that have been profitable from Thor. Thor call, Thor call. We called short. We called short. We're calling entry if we hold high or low. If you want to take it again, just manage risk. I'm not advising anyone to take this trade. I'm just letting you know something I'm going to look at if we hold this high or low um, and where I may look to take profits and how it is I look at Thor. And now that I've laid these fibs out, how the fuck does Thor do it? <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. Yeah, it's uh, because it fucks, man. You know the, you know the answer. Dude. So many times, like I couldn't make this call. I didn't have this point right here. Oh shit, I'm lagging. I didn't have this point right here until that candle, right? Which was um, 6 p.m. yesterday. So about 12 hours ago. I guarantee you, Thor's had this call for a while, right? It it just it fucks and look where it falls right into right into entry zone for the daily short. It's not it's not coincidence. Not coincidence. Um Ronti, I'll show you me real quick in case you, uh, you know, like I said, we were respecting pretty much everything I said. You know, you can't expect price to be absolutely perfect following lines, but you see how damn close, you know, these have come to even calling where the low may be, looking at the last low and looking at this, this line that was resistance looking at it potentially becoming support you know that's what how we called this um and then looking at it becoming resistance which it now has and looking at refilling this zone and if we find support here maybe going back up uh and if we don't hold this zone and we fall back in the box look to re-enter uh, DCA back in here. And the truth is, right, if Rumpty bought here and he sold up here, if he buys here and price goes all the way back down here, he's still way better off than if he did nothing. That's why it's DCA, dollar cost average. Buy some here. And if it continues to go down, buy some back here. If it finds support and starts moving up, buy the rest right here before you leave the zone and keep going. But dollar cost average in, you know, he, he took profits from what he had. Anywhere he buys, he is in profit. But now I would say, Rumpty, this is the zone you want to start uh, looking to take profit and look to load up uh, on this support line. <clears throat> So yeah, buy order set yeah, right around that area. It's like seven, <laughs> seven, eight, or seven, nine, something like that. So there you are. You're right in the zone, right at toward the bottom of it. There you go. Yeah, and it's just set for that. I mean, I'm watching it, but right. it's set for that just so I don't have to watch it completely every single day. Um, anybody else got something they want to touch on before I wrap up? Because I do have to go. No, uh, not for me. Um, just want to say thank you again, Mode, and uh, blessings. Frogs, Frog. Love the community. I love you all. And uh, peace out, guys. Frogs, Fuck. I appreciate all you for real. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to, I will probably not get to this write up until Thursday, just because I am pretty much busy between right now till Thursday. Uh, maybe I can get to it tomorrow night. Um, but take a look at the chart, even screenshot it if you want. You know, again, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Uh, here is the Thor calls that you should be paying attention to. You guys have Thor, so you can look them up for yourselves. This is just some fucking bozo named Mode drawing lines on a chart. So don't, you know, not financial advice. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Stay profitable. Manage risk. Manage risk. You know, manage your risk. Let Thor find you on the right side of probability. You literally don't even need to do anything but take Thor calls and manage risk. And profitable. 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 This one we called, but, you know, um, same with Bitcoin. Look back. <clears throat> Big profits, profits, profits. These were all calls made on stream that you could have taken. This isn't aftermath, you know. Aftermath, Thor is making a fuck ton of calls that are that are following through. These are just calls that we're looking at together that you could have taken if you were on stream with us and just said it. So, um, frogs talk. Appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you Friday for Frogs Fuck Friday. Frogs Trade well, man risk. Appreciate the fuck out of y'all. You too, Mo. Take it easy, brother. Frogs Fuck.